Well, guess what? It's Scott that has the crush on you. You lied to me. Did you have any idea that he liked you this much? Um, no, 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 I did not. <laughs> Can you tell us not. what your status is? I mean, you involved with anybody or? Um, no, but I am uh, definitely a heterosexual. He said he wouldn't leave me alone. That's why I did it. He said I went on the Jenny Jones show. I didn't know it was a guy. That's why I killed him. Jonathan Schmitz lived an ordinary life. He was, by all definitions, an average Joe who lived in Michigan and generally led a quiet life. But on March 6, 1995, he was invited to appear on one of the most popular talk shows of the day, The Jenny Jones Show, where it was teased that a secret crush would be revealed, expecting a beautiful woman to reveal herself. Schmitz was bewildered when the secret crush was revealed to be a gay acquaintance named Scott. Well, guess what? It's Scott that has the crush on you. You lied to me. <laughs> Did you have any idea that he liked you this much? Um, no, no, no. <laughs> amateur. On screen, Schmitz appeared amused and even flattered at Amateur's revelation. But when the camera stopped rolling, Jonathan Schmitz struck back and the resulting tragedy changed forever. This is the shocking true story of the man once dubbed the Jenny Jones Killer. When appearing on the Jenny Jones Show, Amateur explained to the studio audience how he met Schmitz when he went to see his friend Don at her apartment. He found John working under her car. Amateur told the audience that he immediately noticed Schmitz's body and how good it looked in his half-shirt. He went on to say that even though he'd been dreaming up fantasies about his crush involving a hammock, champagne, and whipped cream, he wasn't actually sure if Schmitz was gay. A TV show would be the best way to find out. Little did he know, this would be the nail to his own coffin. If you believe Jonathan Schmitz, he went on The Jenny Jones Show, one of the most popular talk shows of the 1990s, because he was told that a woman had a crush on him, and he was curious to know who it was. He was invited to tape an episode of the show at its Chicago area studios on March 6, 1995. When he arrived at the studio, he saw a woman he knew in the audience and thought she might be his secret admirer. He figured she was his secret admirer and walked up and kissed her, said Lieutenant Bruce Nail of the Sheriff's Department to the New York Times. But then they told him, oh no, she's not your secret admirer. This, in this case, was Scott Amateur, a 32-year-old acquaintance of Schmitz's who had been introduced to him by a mutual friend named Donna Riley, who also was at the taping. He was stunned, said the lieutenant. He had agreed to do the show, so he didn't know what to do or what his rights were, so he sat there and went along with it. The Jenny Jones show producers, however, had a different story. They claimed that they told Jonathan Schmitz that his crush could be a man or a woman, leaving it open to interpretation. In the actual episode, which ultimately never made it to air, Schmitz genially told Amateur that he was definitely heterosexual and didn't seem enraged or otherwise disturbed by the revelation. And at worst, everyone thought it would be something that would be laughed off in the future, maybe as a tall tale to tell over a night of drinking with friends. Regardless of which version of events you believe, however, the tragic result was the same. In his defense, Schmitz claimed that the producers of the Jenny Jonas show ambushed him. He claims that he knew someone had a crush on him, but he assumed that it was either an ex-fiancé whom he was engaged to for a few years or an ex-girlfriend. Producers of the show said that they told Schmitz that it was possible that his crush could have been a man or a woman and that he just blocked out the part of their warning that he didn't want to hear. Three days after Jonathan Schmitz taped his national television appearance on The Jenny Jones Show, he returned home from an evening out with friends to find an anonymous note on his door. Though the contents of the note were never revealed, it was enough to enrage Schmitz. He grabbed his shotgun, knocked on Amateur's door, and pumped two rounds into his chest, killing him instantly. Schmitz then left the residence, contacted the police, and confessed to the killing. Ma'am, I, uh, I think I just got a man. Okay, calm down, okay? <laughs> okay, why did you do that?
The ensuing trial was nothing short of a media circus. Prosecutors claimed that Schmitz killed Amateur in cold blood in an attempt to hide the fact that the pair were having an affair, a claim bolstered by the testimony of Amateur's friend who testified to the affair on the stand. But Schmitz's lawyers argued that the show and its producers were to blame for the ensuing tragedy. They claimed that but for their failure to disclose Amateur's intentions, he would still be alive. The defense also revealed that Schmitz's father frequently made homophobic comments to his son, and Schmitz killed Amateur out of a gay panic that ensued. The hardest thing to determine during Schmitz's first trial was whether or not he was mentally stable when he went after Amateur. Joseph Warm, a juror on the case, said that after a three-day break from the case, the jury couldn't decide whether or not Schmitz was thinking straight when he fired two rounds through Amateur's chest. Throughout the trial, Schmitz's lawyers claimed that their client was manic-depressive and that he'd been up all night drinking and smoking pot before going after Amateur. The trial wasn't cut and dry, even though Schmitz called 911 and confessed. Schmitz's lawyers attempted to put the Jenny Jones show on trial to deflect guilt from their client, and they discussed his issues with alcoholism, depression, and a chronic thyroid condition. However, that wasn't enough to keep Schmitz from going to jail. Before being sentenced the first time, Schmitz read a poem that he wrote that was meant as an apology to Amateur's family. The judge told Schmitz that he still had to be accountable to society. In the end, a jury convicted Jonathan Schmitz of second-degree murder in 1996 and was sentenced to 25 to 50 years in prison. The conviction was subsequently overturned, and after a retrial, Schmitz was reconvicted of the same crime in 1999. He was released in 2017 on parole and has remained out of the limelight ever since. After the Jenny Jones killer was convicted of second-degree murder, the Amateur family sued the Jenny Jones show for the wrongful death of Scott Amateur. At trial, Jones got on the stand and testified that she didn't get permission from Schmitz to humiliate him on national television. She also confirmed that her show didn't do a background check on Jonathan Schmitz or any of her guests before bringing them on the air. Amateur's attorney pointed out that had Jones and her staff conducted a background check on Schmitz, his past mental health and addiction issues would have been revealed. In the end, Scott Amateur's family was awarded nearly $30 million in a judgment against Jones and her show, but the judgment was later overturned in a 2-2-1 ruling. It is hard to say that justice was really truly served, but we'll let you be the judge of that.